Janine Keegan. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. It's a pleasure to follow the Honourable Member for Jarrow. There is no doubt that we are living through a period of profound change created by the digital revolution. We should all, therefore, welcome the Chancellor's announcements in the Budget to invest in the skills and technologies to equip our country and give us the confidence to rise to this challenge. And we should feel confident. Throughout our history, the UK has pioneered change that has rippled out across the world, from the advent of the steam engine to the invention of the internet. We are good at embracing change. In the mid-1990s, at the start of the dot-com boom, I spent a few years working in Tokyo to develop chips with enough memory to enable digital cash on a bank card or in a phone. This new technology we were developing was a million times smaller than the chip in an iPhone today. The rate of progress in the digital age is phenomenal and will continue to be. The UK is a global leader in tech, supported and driven by the finest academic institutions in the world and bold businesses that challenge the norm. In Chichester, we are home to Rolls-Royce, where they use state-of-the-art technology to manufacture their engineering masterpieces, which even include an electric Rolls-Royce. My constituency is also home to a £1 billion fresh food industry, where I have seen firsthand robots ensuring the perfect grain conditions for herbs and salads as they move from potting to germination all the way through to packaging. Technology is already having a big impact on the way we do business in Chichester. <laughs> to achieve our full potential, we need an integrated plan embracing education from primary, where eight-year-olds are now learning basic coding, through to secondary and tertiary, including maths and digital skills at all stages. And to anybody sat in the local comprehensive school in Liverpool, as I was, these are the keys to your social mobility. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not all just tech. Chichester University has a new STEAM centre adding art, design and creativity to technology, a winning combination. The government's ambition is clear, with a further £2.3 billion invested in science and innovation, the highest level in 30 years. The Chancellor is also investing in infrastructure to develop fast fibre broadband and 5G networks. And this is important, as all this talk of advanced technology must be baffling to some of my constituents as they struggle to stream music or even to download a film. As we leave the EU, we must be more flexible and innovative. On our side are centuries of competitive advantage, thanks to our geography, language, time zone, common law and institutions, including the one I'm standing in. As someone who has worked in tech for more than 20 years, I know this makes us an attractive hub for business, trade and technology. And we have a head start. The UK is host to 18% of the world's data flows, so we already have a well-developed platform from which to grow, and grow in all parts of the country as we expand tech cities into a tech nation. To conclude, Mr Deputy Speaker, I welcome the budget and the industrial strategy and I am optimistic about the future of this country and the economy. The Government is investing for the long-term success of our nation in industry, in technology, in houses, including council houses, in construction, in our NHS and most importantly in its people and the skills they need to secure their future prosperity. Yeah. Pat Mac